My name is Sarah, and I'm a 51-year-old homemaker. My only daughter, Hannah, has just moved into a new house near us with her husband, Ken. Ken works at the company that my husband, Matt, runs, but I didn't know Ken at that time. I learned about him when I attended the company's anniversary party with my daughter. That same day, Hannah and Ken met, instantly fell in love, and soon started dating, eventually considering their marriage. Being our only daughter, I naturally wanted her husband to join our family. Plus, whoever would take over my husband's company had to be someone up to the task. But Ken was just an employee. Would he be a good match for Hannah? Neither my husband nor I had such concerns. As long as they took responsibility for their relationship and remained close, we had no objections. My husband didn't feel strongly about our daughter taking over the company, either. But then, Ken expressed a desire to join our family, catching both my husband and me by surprise. We thought it was important to hear his parents' opinions as well, and suggested having a proper discussion between the two families. However, Ken passionately said, Life with Hannah. I joined Matt's company because I admired its culture. Even if I join your family, I don't expect to inherit the company. Right now, I'm just a regular employee, but I want to climb the ladder with my own efforts and build a life with Hannah. I want to be close to such a great company and to the man who founded it, Matt. If he doesn't want to be the next CEO, What's the point of becoming our son-in-law? If he's sincere, he could just say, please let me marry your daughter without becoming our son. My husband and I both thought the same, so we mentioned this to Ken. But I still want to be Matt's son. I want to carry the family name that Hannah was born and raised with. Ken insisted. Can I trust that you truly mean that? Just because you're my son-in-law, don't expect any special treatment or an easy promotion. You've said some nice things about me, but what matters more to me and my wife is that you take good care of our daughter. Yes, I understand completely. I'll spend my life protecting and making Hannah happy. Ken's unwavering determination in response to my husband's words won us over and we decided to accept Ken as part of our family. However, that was a big mistake. As our daughter's pregnancy progressed and her belly became more noticeable, things started to go awry. Hannah, who was once bright and full of happiness, began to lose her spark little by little. At first, I thought her health and emotions were just unstable because of her pregnancy. But from observing her, I felt like something else was going on. What's wrong? You don't look well. Are you eating properly? Yes, I'm fine. Even when I asked, she would only give short answers, and I couldn't get her to open up. I would be relieved if there was nothing wrong, but I couldn't shake the vague and knees inside me. When she was close to her due date, she and Ken came over for dinner, and Ken's behavior was clearly strange. Ken, you seem really busy lately, but Hannah seems anxious about her first pregnancy, so please support her as much as you can. Huh? Oh yeah. His curt response left me feeling uneasy. This attitude was so different from the Ken who once passionately spoke about his love for Hannah, and it gave me an indescribable discomfort. Sure, nobody likes being nagged by their mother-in-law, but I wasn't being harsh. I had never meddled in Ken's life before. So what was with that look? When I glanced at Hannah, she was trying to smile, but her eyebrows were slightly furrowed, giving her a troubled expression. 
Is something bothering Hannah about Ken? I couldn't shake the uneasy feeling I had about Ken, and I started to sense that there might be trouble between them as a couple. Hannah, why don't you stay over tonight? It might be nice for a change. For some reason, I didn't feel comfortable letting my daughter go home that night, so I suggested she spend the night with us. Really? But... She glanced anxiously at Ken, but he didn't even bother to look her way. Come on, it'll be fine. Your room's still just as you left it. I insisted, almost forcefully, and sent Ken home early. Once I made sure Ken was out of sight, I turned to Hannah and asked, Are you really okay? This is an important time for you, so I think it's better not to keep everything bottled up. It's nothing. Really? What are you trying to say? I told you it's nothing. As my daughter stubbornly clammed up, Matt finally spoke up. Actually, it's about Kane. What? You know something? I was surprised to hear Ken's name come out of Matt's mouth. Maybe he had sensed something, too. What about Ken? I asked, and Matt sighed before beginning. Well, apparently, Ken's behavior at work hasn't been great. And there are rumors circulating in his department. Rumors? What kind? Apparently, he's been saying things like, The SEAL personally asked me to become his son-in-law. So I'm the next in line to be SEAL. He's also reportedly been acting arrogantly towards his co-workers and bosses and barely doing his job. Is that true? That's the complete opposite of what he told us. When Ken married Hannah, he said something like, Just because I'm your son-in-law doesn't mean I should get special treatment. Yes, but apparently, more than just one or two people have heard him say this, haven't you confirmed any of this? Why not ask Ken's boss directly? In a large company, the CEO doesn't often hear about the behavior of individual employees. Each department usually handles its own issues. But since Ken is my family, we can't just ignore such rumors. It's possible that he was joking around with close co-workers and another employee overheard and took it the wrong way, spreading the rumor. Then why didn't you ask Ken directly? He was right here just a moment ago. Well, I didn't want to worry Hannah by bringing it up in front of her. Still, didn't you notice how strange Ken was acting earlier? Didn't that seem off to you? Based on Ken's behavior earlier, I was starting to think the rumors might be true. Matt's vague responses were frustrating me. At that moment, I turned to look at my daughter and saw tears streaming down her face. Hannah, what's wrong? As I was trying to understand why she suddenly started crying, she burst into tears as if a dam had broken. Are you okay, Hannah? When I looked closely at Hannah's face, she started to speak haltingly. The truth is, Ken was really kind at first, but after we found out I was pregnant, he suddenly changed. Changed? How did he change? He gets irritated easily, complains a lot, and sometimes just leaves to go back to his parents' house and doesn't come back for a long time. When I told him I was feeling anxious and needed him by my side, he got really angry and left again. And then... And then... Ken's mom comes over without any notice and says things like, Ken doesn't eat this, and throws away the food I made. She tells me I'm clueless and says things like, Poor Ken, marrying a girl like you. Did Ken's mother really say that to you? Yeah. Matt and I were both speechless at Hannah's words. 
I couldn't believe that Ken's mother, Maria, who had been all smiles at the wedding, had been saying such horrible things to my daughter. Why didn't you tell us sooner? Because I didn't want to make you and dad sad by telling you what was happening. And I didn't want to believe it myself. Ken, who proposed to me so earnestly, couldn't possibly be acting like this. I kept telling myself that maybe he was just stressed out from work or that he was frustrated because I couldn't do as much around the house during my pregnancy, but... That's enough. I couldn't help but pull her into a tight hug. I had believed she was living a happy married life, but she was going through all this. I felt utterly ashamed for not noticing sooner. You heard that, didn't you? I believe the rumors about Ken are true. You should fire him immediately. And I want him to divorce Hannah. Calm down. How can you say that? Our daughter is going through this. As her parents, we can't just stand by. My frustration only grew as Matt tried to calm me, and I felt an overwhelming urge to storm over to Ken's parents' house right then. You haven't asked Hannah what she wants, have you? And we haven't heard Ken's side of the story. As her parents, I'm also angry. But this isn't something we can decide on our own right now. But... I'll look into the situation at the company first thing tomorrow. But the issues between Hannah and Ken are separate. We need to have a conversation with both sides. That's too slow. If the rumors in Hannah's story are true, then you must get Ken out of your company. We can't make decisions based on emotions and assumptions. We need to talk to the employees and Ken himself. I knew the company had to be cautious and that firing someone wasn't easy. But still. Hannah, what do you want to do? Your mom is upset and saying she wants you to get a divorce. But your feelings are the most important. What do you think? When Matt gently asked, Hannah slowly lifted her head. I still want to believe in Ken. I think he'll change once the baby is born. He was so kind just a short while ago. You heard her? We need to respect Hannah's feelings. You, as her mom, shouldn't lose control. What we need to do isn't to argue emotionally right now. Trying to regain my composure, I reminded myself to stay calm. You're right. Hannah, I'm sorry for raising my voice. For now, just focus on resting. I'll help you, so take it easy. Okay. Although I wanted to support my daughter in her sadness, I couldn't suppress the anger I felt towards Ken and his mom, Maria. But there was nothing I could do right now. Hannah needed to focus on the baby at this crucial time. For now, I had to keep calm and make sure she could give birth safely. Despite my frustration, I prayed that Ken would return to being the kind person he once was, just as my daughter wished. However, out of concern, I decided to have Hannah stay with us under the pretense of a return to her parents' home for childbirth. I didn't care if people thought I was overprotective. The most important thing was the well-being of the baby and Hannah's peace of mind. I left the company matters to Matt and focused on being by Hannah's side as much as possible. Ken visited every three days to check on Hannah, but he remained distant towards her. I wanted to give him a piece of my mind, but she was due to be admitted to the hospital for the delivery tomorrow. There was no time for complaints. I would wait until things had settled down to address them. Just three days after Hannah was admitted to the hospital, her water broke earlier than expected, and she started having intense contractions late at night. When we received the call from the hospital, Matt and I rushed there as quickly as we could. She's just been taken into the delivery room. 
the nurse informed us. But then, I suddenly realized someone important was missing. Well, has my daughter's husband arrived yet? I asked. The nurse looked uncomfortable as she replied. We've called him several times, but he hasn't answered. What? What on earth could he be doing at a time like this? Could he possibly be sleeping off a night of drinking? I hurried to the lobby, determined to keep calling until he woke up, if that was the case, and dialed Ken's number. On the third or fourth ring, he finally answered, but his voice was infuriatingly casual as he said, Yeah, what's up? What do you think you're doing? I've been calling you over and over. Hannah's just been taken to the delivery room. The baby's coming any minute. Get here now. A normal man would panic upon hearing that. But Ken wasn't normal. No, I can't do it. I'm in Bahamas with my parents right now. What are you talking about? A joke at a time like this? If so, it's an extremely poor taste. Can I hang up now? This trip's getting ruined. Wait a minute. Are you seriously not in the country? Are you really on vacation? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do you understand what's happening with Hannah right now? Why would you go on a trip at a time like this? The due date wasn't until next week, right? I didn't expect it to be now. That's not the point. My voice grew louder as I struggled to communicate with Ken, who seemed completely detached from the situation. Just then, Matt, worried that I hadn't returned, came over. As soon as our eyes met, tears of frustration welled up in mine. Seeing my distress, Matt furrowed his brow and silently leaned in to listen to the conversation on my phone. Can I hang up now? To be honest, I don't even want kids. What? Both Matt and I gasped at Ken's blunt statement. Yeah, because once the baby's born, nobody is going to care about me anymore, right? I'd rather stay with my parents where I'm treated like a prince. And you know what? At first, I sucked up to you guys and pretended I wasn't interested in becoming the next SEAL thinking you'd like me better and fast-track my promotion. I figured I'd end up living a cushy life with my parents eventually, but nothing's changed, so I'm over it. Without a kid, maybe I could have just let it slide, but with a kid, it feels like, I don't know, a heavy responsibility or something. Anyway, Hannah doesn't want to leave me, so I'm thinking about what to do. If you guys take care of the kid and let Hannah focus on taking care of me, maybe I'll consider it. Oh, and make sure I get that promotion. You can do that for your darling daughter, right? His non-stop blabbering felt like a surreal nightmare. In the background, I could hear Maria's cheery voice calling out, Ken, Ken. Are you serious? Dead serious. Just as I was about to scream, Matt snatched the phone from me and silently hung up. Honey. Matt stood before me, gripping his phone tightly, his expression unlike anything I had ever seen. His face was flushed with anger, radiating fury from every pore of his being. Enough. Take care of Hannah. I'll handle the rest. He said in a voice so low, I barely recognized it as his, before putting on his jacket and heading out the door. I was momentarily stunned by the look on his face, but I quickly snapped out of it and returned to the area outside the delivery room. Please let both Hannah and the baby be okay. I prayed fervently, 
trying to drown out the anger I felt toward Ken. The cry of a newborn that echoed through the early morning was like the voice of an angel, delivering my daughter from her suffering. On the day of Hannah's discharge, as I was packing up while she cradled her baby with a look of pure joy, both her phone and mine began to ring in succession. Hannah didn't even glance at her phone, while I took one look at the screen and immediately tossed it onto the sofa. How many times is that now? Who knows? Let's just ignore it. Just then, Matt called out, Hey, it's time to go and we left the hospital that had taken such good care of us. When we arrived home, we were startled to find Ken and his parents slumped on the ground outside our gate, looking utterly exhausted. As soon as they saw us, the three of them jumped to their feet. What the hell is going on? Ken shouted, his voice causing the baby to start crying. I shielded Hannah from them, while Matt calmly ushered the trio inside. How was your trip to Bahamas? Did you just get back today? You're all dressed rather casually for a visit. He remarked, noting their resort attire. They certainly didn't look like people who had come to visit someone's home, but rather like they had been through quite an ordeal. Don't joke around. We had the worst time over there. We were supposed to come back last week. What? Apparently, their trip to Bahamas had turned into a chaotic survival adventure. Here's a summary of their escapades. They were scammed with exorbitant taxi fares. Maria was persuaded by the charming shop clerk at the souvenir store to buy a huge amount of items she had no use for. Ken's father, Tad, was approached by a young woman asking for a donation. He gave her money, only to be chased down by dozens of beggars afterward. To top it all off, on the day of their return, their bag containing passports and money was stolen, leaving them stranded and forced to sleep rough as they couldn't arrange new accommodations. We had to deal with embassies and all sorts of things. We were stuck there for an extra week. Maria fumed, her eyes wide with frustration. I felt a bit sorry for them, but what could I say other than, wow, that sounds rough. What kind of response is that? Like you don't even care. I called you so many times. Your son-in-law went through hell, and you didn't help at all. Isn't that just cruel? Ken's tone was exasperating, and I couldn't help but put my head in my hands. You went on a trip abroad while your wife was going through a difficult time. How can you stand there and say such things? You're supposed to be the father of that baby. I was so fed up that I couldn't even muster tears anymore. I didn't even have the energy to argue back. No, that's not the main thing I wanted to talk about. It's the company. What the hell is going on there? Ken yelled as he thrust a piece of paper in front of Matt and me. It was a termination letter, clearly outlining the reasons, with Matt's signature at the bottom. This was waiting for me at my parents' house this morning. A termination notice? Are you kidding? Am I really fired? What? Kenny's fired. Maria shrieked as she confronted Matt, while Tad's face turned pale as he read the letter. You lied about a family emergency to go on that trip. Did you really think that lie wouldn't catch up with you? Matt leaned in close to Ken, who started to laugh nervously. Come on, Matt. What are you talking about? I overheard your entire conversation with my wife the other day. At those words, sweat began to bead on Ken's forehead. Well, you see, I, uh, I got carried away in the excitement of being in an overseas. So, 
You have a tendency to spew lies when you get excited, do you? No, I mean, it was just a joke, Matt. You understand, right? He clearly underestimated Matt. Standing beside him, I could feel a shiver run down my spine, knowing that the storm was about to break upon Ken and his family. And about the firing, you're joking, right? Wait, is it April Fool's Day? Matt, you're not usually the type to pull pranks like this. Ken said with a nervous laugh. In an instant, Matt's expression turned deadly serious. No, Ken. I spoke with the board immediately after overhearing your phone conversation. The decision was unanimous. You're fired. Matt said that, looking directly into Ken's eyes. Ken was momentarily taken aback by the sudden shift in Matt's expression and tone, his eyes widening in confusion. Wait a minute, you can't be serious. What do you mean? It's not that easy to fire an employee, right? What did I do? Is it because I lied about the family emergency to go on the trip? You can't fire me for that. I'll sue. That's right. We'll sue for wrongful termination. Matt remained unfazed, his posture and tone as calm as ever. You're right. It's not easy to fire an employee. And you're welcome to sue. But in that case... We'll present evidence of your behavior towards your coworkers, your demeaning remarks to female employees, and other incidents. We've already consulted with our legal team and have testimonies to support our case. But, but... Ken's face drained of color. And that's not all. You also... Stop, please. Ken interrupted leaning forward, trying to prevent Matt from saying more. What? What else? Maria truly has no idea what's going on. She didn't realize that Ken had been embezzling from the company. When I first heard about your misconduct from the employees, I was prepared to transfer you to a branch office in a remote area, thinking that if you could change for the sake of Hannah and your child, that would be enough. But after hearing that phone call, I made my decision. I considered turning you over to the police. But I didn't want my grandchild to grow up with a father who's a criminal. So, consider your termination an act of mercy. Something for which you should be grateful. No. What does Hannah have to say about this? She wants a divorce. We've already spoken to our lawyer. That's not true. That can't be true. Hannah's crazy about me. There's no way she'd say that. At that moment, Hannah returned to the room after putting the baby down to sleep. Hannah, tell them it's not true. They're just trying to push me out. I'm being unfairly treated and fired. You have to stand up for me. Ken pleaded but the icy look in Hannah's eyes stopped him in his tracks. I heard everything from my mom. I'm divorcing you. No, you can't do that. You need me. I'm the father. Father? You don't even want this child. I admit, I once loved you. That's why I endured everything you and Maria said to me. I was afraid of the trouble a divorce would cause and worried about my future. But after seeing my baby, I realized I don't care about you at all anymore. In fact, I think it's better if this child has no father than one like you. I will protect and raise this baby on my own. My baby gave me the courage to do this. She declared, her voice filled with the strength of a mother defending her child. Hannah's unwavering gaze bore into Ken, who glared back, his face twisted with rage. Don't give me that crap. You don't know anything. You're just some clueless girl. You should be happy just catering to my needs. Yeah, 
You're just a spoiled rich girl. Don't you know what it means to support your husband? You should have helped Ken get ahead and bought us a house. Wait, don't tell me. Are you the ones who arranged for us to be stranded in Bahamas? Is that why we couldn't come back? You must have paid those locals to scam us. This is all a conspiracy, and I'll have the police on you for this. Maria suddenly blurted out her wild conspiracy theory causing me to nearly burst out laughing despite the situation. Ken, if you don't care about me or the baby, then why are you so resistant to the divorce? You're just mad because you can't control me anymore, right? Well, I'm done taking your orders, no matter what threats you make. You. Shut up. You've embarrassed Ken. You should apologize. You raised a horrible daughter, and your terrible parents too. All of you should apologize to us right now. At that moment, Matt stood up abruptly, his face a mask of fury. You bastard. He bellowed at them with such force that the house seemed to shake, and all three of them jumped back as if they'd been struck. Get out of here. If you say another word, I swear I'll make your lives a living hell. He roared, his anger so intense it was almost palpable, like flames shooting from his back. My husband, usually so gentle and kind, had transformed into a figure of righteous wrath, and the three of them cowered before him, scrambling to leave the house as quickly as possible. After that, Hannah and Ken finalized their divorce and Hannah was awarded full custody of the child. Not long after Ken was fired, Tad lost his job as well. It seemed neither Ken nor Maria had realized, or perhaps Tad had simply forgotten that Tad's company was a subsidiary of Matt's. When Ken received his termination letter, Tad must have panicked. But by then, it was too late. The rumors had spread to Tad's workplace, making it impossible for him to stay, and he chose to resign. Maria once tried to complain to me about Tad losing his job, so I reminded her of something she had said before. Do you know what it means to support your husband? Maybe you should help him get back on his feet. I returned her words to Maria with a smile. After his dismissal, Ken sent his resume to Matt's company, thinking he could get rehired. Soon, he will receive a rejection letter along with a restraining order, barring him from contacting Hannah or the baby. Hannah is now working hard to raise her child and rebuild her life. All Matt and I can do is watch over her and offer our support. But I hope she never forgets one thing. No matter what happens, we will always be there for her. We will never abandon her and will always reach out to help. So please, keep smiling and be happy. As I watched my daughter lovingly gaze at her baby, I silently prayed from the depths of my heart for her happiness.